Yo, what's up guys? We're back and this week we're doing one of those let's see what this weird oddball amp really does. Because sometimes it's fun to do this weird stuff because if it's a crazy good amp, we already know it's going to do what it says. So this is not one of those. This is one of those where we're wondering, hmm, I wonder what's up with this one. So this is what we're doing. It's a Lanzar Vector. You guys didn't even know I had my own amp, did you? Fight. So I hope it does good or I'll be embarrassed. Hey, hey, so chill, this is 6,000 watts Lanzar VCT 2610. And... These are $99, guys. It's kind of ridiculous. This thing is huge, and it looks really nice. I was kind of shocked for 99 bucks. I thought it was just going to be a pile and feel just like a piece of junk, but it doesn't. There's like $99 worth of case on this amplifier, so I'm curious to see what this is going to do. But you can see it's got the nice Lanzar Vector, Hi-Fi Vector logo on there. Please, please. Please, thank you. Thank you. So let's see what the specs say. And here's the spec sheet, and it's kind of confusing. It says RMS power at 4 ohm, 300 times 2, and THD at 4 ohm, 450 times 2. And then it says RMS power at 2 ohms, 600 times 2, THD at 2 ohms, 900 times 2, maximum output power, 6,000 times 2. Bridged at 4 ohm output, 8,000 times 1. Now, I know what you're thinking, guys. There's no way this amp could put out that power. But it says right here, powerful performance, up to 6,000 watts of pure power for your car audio system. Woo! But we'll see if that's the truth or not. I highly doubt it, but you never know. So this is on this end here. We got two RCA ins, two outs, level, crossover, subsonic, and a power and protect light. And then... On the top right here, we have a subsonic and bass boost. And then over here on this side, which is very interesting, we have two 60 amp fuses. Yet we got those little tiny spade terminals. So that would indicate almost if you went by the rule that this thing would be putting out 600 times two. So something's suspicious here. I don't know, who knows? Maybe this will I'll shock us all, but this is a huge amplifier. Look at this thing. It's almost two feet long, so it is enormous. I mean, it looks nice, but it's huge. So if you're getting one of these, make sure you got the room. And as far as the width, it's almost 11 inches wide. So very large amplifier. But again, it feels really high quality. So this is going to be a really interesting one. But the funny thing is, is they tout how compact this amplifier is. Huh? Check this out. So even here it says slim design, measuring only 10.6 by 1.78 by 22 inches long. Slim design comes complete with mounting hardware. That's not compact at all. I don't know where they're getting this, but it's kind of funny to me. And then again here, sleek and compact design. What? Slim design allows for easy installation. Huh? Well, anyway, enough about that. Let's go ahead and get this amp hooked up and see what it actually puts out because we all know it's not going to do 6,000 but you never know for 99 bucks we'll see all right so we're going to go ahead and start out in two channel mode at four ohm and this is certified so the power readings stop when it hits one percent thd and the manual was kind of confusing as we saw before, but I'm assuming it says in the manual 300 times two. So we'll see how close this gets. Not bad. I mean, 230 times two certified at four ohms. Uh, the efficiency so far is not looking that great, but we'll show that in a chart later after I calculate it. So there you go, certified 230 times two. So next we'll do the uncertified test, which is basically the max power all the way up to clipping. Maybe it will do a little more, so let's check that out. See if it does any more uncertified. And we know it's not gonna do these big numbers, but the point is, like, is it worth $99? That's what I'm 
kind of interesting interested in. A little bit more, not much, about 250 times 2 at 4 ohm. So, I mean, even right there, is it worth 99 bucks? 250 times 2 at 4 ohm? Not bad, I guess, you know, as long as it lasts a long time. Seems to run pretty cool so far. Seems to be drawing a lot of current, too. Seems to be kind of on the inefficient side. So let's do some dynamic burst and see what it puts out. So this is short bursts of like kick drum hit to simulate like rock music or normal percussion instruments. Little tiny bit more, 257. Mm. So again, I can't even really, don't really have anything solid to compare it to in the specs because the manual's kind of confusing. But there you go. Let's go ahead and do the 2 ohm 2 channel test next. So again, starting at certified, this stops the wattage reading when it hits 1% THD. So basically this is clean max power output. And at 4 ohms, we got about 230 to 250. So we'll see what it puts out here at 2 ohm. Two channel. A little bit more, 300 watts times two. You know, and I guess like that's not bad. Like if you had two two subs, you know, two two ohm subs, 300 watts a piece ain't bad. So again, it's just like, is it worth 99 bucks? We kind of know it's not gonna do the numbers. I mean, we always know that, right? But sometimes, even though an amp doesn't do what it says, is it worth what it actually puts out? So let's see here if uncertified we can get over 300. A little bit more, 320. So 320 watts times 2 at 2 ohm. And this amp is only 2 ohm stable in 2 channel mode. And it is only 4 ohm stable in bridged mode. So let's go ahead and do some dynamic burst here at 2 ohm, and then we'll go to the bridged mono test. Some amps do a lot more dynamically. Some don't. This one's looking like the numbers are pretty even. Yeah. Pretty consistent. So 365 times 2 at 2 ohm. Like I said, still not bad because for $99, you're getting 700 watts. So, you know, not too bad. All right, let's go ahead and do the bridged mode. So we'll have a single channel output and see what this does. Okay, and they don't even give us any specs in the manual besides the BS 8000 times one bridged. So I really have nothing to go by of what this is supposed to put out. So we're just going to see what it actually puts out. And this is two channels bridged into one. So this is a single output. Eh, you know, 633 watts, man, for 99 bucks. That's not too bad because there's a lot of boss amps that are like 100 bucks that put out like 180, 150 watts. Like those ones that say like 5,000 watts. So really this ain't too bad, man. 633 for 100 bucks and that's even at 4 ohm. So... I don't know. What do you guys think? I mean, it's kind of huge, but for the money, it's not bad so far. So now here's uncertified max power up to clipping. Let's see if it does any more. I don't know what to think about this amplifier so far. A little tiny bit more, 661 at 4 ohm. Man, that efficiency is gonna doesn't seem like it's gonna be good at all. I'm so curious to calculate that. So again, you know, these aren't it's not too bad. Those power acoustic razors that are a hundred bucks put out like five hundred watts, you know, at four ohms. So essentially this is a better deal than the power acoustic razors, kind of. Let's see what it puts out dynamic. I know the Razer 3500 power acoustics do about 300 at 4 ohm mono. So if you compare that to this, this is actually kind of a better deal. 
but let's see what it puts out dynamic at 4 ohm. 712, 717. So that's the final number. So that's only 4 ohm stable, but I'm going to go ahead and just do dynamic at 2 ohm and see what it does because I think it'll be fine. I don't think it'll pop at 2 ohm dynamic. So let's go ahead and try that real quick. So 717 is what we got at 4 ohm dynamic. See if this thing can squeeze any more out at two. Tiny bit more, not much, man, from dropping from four to two. So there you go. What do you guys think? Let's check out the results chart, but you guys will have to chime in on this one. Is it worth 99 bucks? I mean, the power is not too bad. Not the greatest, but all right, let's go ahead and check out all the results. I'm curious on this efficiency too. Ugh. Guys, I knew it. Look at the efficiency. It's really bad on this amp. I think this is the worst efficiency amp I've ever tested. Wow. Look at that. 43% at 2 ohm. 54 at 4 ohm. The best it got was 59%, and that's dynamic. Yikes. Anyway, I mean, good thing it's not a big power amp, so be drawing a lot more current but so as you can see there's all the ratings for two channel mode so those watts obviously are times two channels again 99 dollars. this is what you're getting but yikes man that efficiency is really bad so far that's the biggest downfall all right so let's check out the bridge mode so this is two channels into one efficiency was still really bad but the power output was decent. I don't know. Again, what do you guys think for 99 bucks? It's better than some of the cheap amps, but worse than a lot. So I'm not sure what to think about this one in the end. But let's go ahead and get the back off this thing, and I will show you guys what's under the hood. So I forgot I didn't show you guys the back before I pull the cover off. But it has some some venting on the back. It's got a little wiring diagram, I guess, which is nice in case you are a beginner and you lose the instructions. Some more vents on this side. All right, let me get this thing pulled off and I wonder if half this thing will be empty inside or not. And actually, not too bad. This actually looks like an old school kind of a board design. Maybe you guys that know more than me can chime in, but this seems like it's kind of made how a lot of the older amps were made. A lot of room. A lot of room in here, a lot of space. Looks better than I thought, actually. So, I mean, obviously it's a cheap amp, but it doesn't look too bad. And it didn't get hot on the dyno, and I dynoed it quite a bit. Um just to see if it would get warm. It didn't, so maybe the reliability will be good on this amp. So despite the bad efficiency, I mean, it's $99. I've seen a lot worse for $99. Bucks. All right, guys. Well, that sums it up for this one. This was kind of a fun, interesting one for me to do because I was always wondering about these amps. So, like again, I'm on the fence. I don't know if $99 is worth it, if the efficiency maybe wasn't so bad. But, and obviously the two 60 amp fuses on the side are kind of BS, but I guess they're needed because it draws more current because it's so inefficient. The amp is huge, but really the power output wasn't too bad for $99. There's a lot of boss amps that are about this price that put out like 100 to 200 and the Power Acoustic Razor 3500. I did an amp dyno if you want to check it out. This actually put out more bridged at 2 ohm and 4 ohm than that one. And that's a popular amp for 139 So you have to let me know what you guys think about this thing. But it was a fun test regardless. If you guys enjoy the content, please hit that like and subscribe button. It would really help me out. Check out my new website, hi5vector.com. I have bass knobs, amplifier cooling fans, some other car audio accessories. I'm always adding new things. Anything you buy off there helps support the channel, helps afford me to buy more equipment to do reviews on for you guys. 
So I will put a link in the description for this amp if you want to check it out. And again, I'm curious, let me know your guys' thoughts on this thing. Is it a pile? Is it worth it? Is it garbage? Is it decent? Let me know what you think. And until next time, I'll catch you guys on the next one. <laughs>